Hey everybody, this is Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're going to be talking about building a web server in Julia. And we're going to use the Genie framework. That's a pretty lightweight service for actually getting off the ground pretty quickly. So we'll build a Hello World web server, and then we'll build a tiny web service to return some random numbers, just to kind of show exactly what we're up to. It's going to be a great video, so let's get started. One of the things I'd like to look for in a web framework is something that provides very little friction getting off the ground. And Genie certainly qualifies, so that's the one that we're going to use. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to do. So actually, this particular script is going to let us get started from the console without even building an application. So first, we're going to drop into the package manager with a right bracket. Then we're going to add the Genie framework, and then we're going to use the Genie framework and then all we have to do is use the router and create a route. And then we'll send this up command. And then we'll be off to the races. So believe it or not, we'll be able to hit the URL and see exactly what we're, the, the content that we're trying to create. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to bring up our, our Julia. And now we're going to the font a little bit and I'm going to enter the package manager and remember we have to add the genie package right so I'm going to do that now add we're going to add genie it's updating that and then dropping it in now and then then as you remember we're going to use that and then we're going to use the route router so let's do that now. So this is still building. It'll take a few seconds to finish. And then we'll let that happen. And so we're going to drop out of the package manager with a backspace. Then I'm going to say using, using Genie. And I'd like to tap the, the tab to get completion so I know that the package is actually loaded. And it is, which is great. So now I need to add the router also, but we'll let this pre-compile. It has a, a few little things to load up. And so what we're eventually going to do after we get this one running and, and, and test that our, our package is, is working, we're actually going to build a tiny web service. And I thought that maybe one of the services we could build is, is building a simple matrix of random numbers and then returning that and actually building that as a web service that, that we could use to kind of wrap things in JSON, just to give you a sense of what a pretty common Julia user interface might be. And that's building something that can um, maybe build a model and then, and then return the model to an application, um, or maybe even do some tailoring of an existing model with Flux or something like that. So now we're going to, we're going to use using we're going to use genie dot and then the router like that. And so recall next, we're going to define a route block that looks like this. So it's just the route and then the, the route with a with a preceding slash here. And this is looking for hello. And maybe we'll do something like Groxia. I don't know. And then, then it returns the, the route. But there's a do in there that we need to pick up. So let's do that. Let's uh, define a route. Groxio, and this we're going to add a do to that. So, and then this is going to allow us to um, essentially just specify the string that we want to return. So we're not we're not printing this or writing this to anything. We're just returning a flat string, and so that's what we're going to do. Best learn language site on the web. Okay, and then we're going to end this. Now we should be able to say up. And remember, up is a function. So if I say up and, and um, put the trailing params on it, it's going to fire up the server here. And so now we ought to be able to see from right here. Let's see if we get something at the, at the base. Yeah, we don't have a route for that, so we're not getting anything. So let's fire Groxio instead. 
and you see that it's returning exactly the string that I was looking for. And so let's um, make that a little bit more sophisticated. Um, so let's go back here and maybe we could wrap that in h1. H1, all right, and we'll let that fly. And then we'll send the up. Uh, what did it do? So, yeah, there we go. So we've, we've already changed our, our route. So um, that's all we needed to do. And so actually getting things off the ground is pretty easy. But what we're not doing yet is shaping our, is organizing our code around a Julia web service. And, and we want to do that next to kind of show exactly how easy that is to do. And um, we're going to build a straight, a straight request response app, but this also supports a channels implementation as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with the request res response a piece of that and I think that we'll, we'll kind of wrap up our video there. So the first thing I need to do is to make sure I don't leave any rogue processes around. So I'm just going to say down, let that fly. So that's brought things down nicely. And now I'm going to fire off an application generator. So I'm going to say genie And then we're going to do new app. And so I press tab an extra time so you can see there's one, two, three, four versions of this thing. We only want to use the, the shorthand version, but there's a couple of nice ones for uh, model view controller applications or full stack or you know, even a web service. So let's say new app. We're going to let that fly, and this is going to crunch for a little bit. It's going to build a directory structure that gives us the things that we need for our new application. So you can see it's already changing directories. It's generated a project. It's changing directory into that. And so then it's, it's updating some in individual pieces. It's adding some dependencies. And then it's starting the web server for us. So it's letting that fly and it looks like it's ready to go. So we're going to let this fly in a new browser tab. Eight thousand, just like that. And um, notice it's doing a little bit of pre-compiling, but it'll kick in in just a second here. Yeah. And so it's building it's building a, a page. So it turns out that we have this this application that's created in the directory, let's, okay, so we have our new application. Looks like there is, these are the, the directories that it uses. So the bin is gonna be the, the place that it has tools that it needs. And you're gonna see uh, eight tools, four for Unix and four for Windows, one to generate a REPL, that puts me in the context of the running application. And that's basically the one that 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 you saw it run. Um, then there's one to run tasks for development. There's one to fire the server or fire up the server in an interactive mode. And right now we are running in the REPL interactively. So it's the REPL, the REPL um, script that we need. Um, but so we're not going to use that. If we wanted extra code, we would drop that into the lib directory and everything would be fine. But right now, I think that we're just going to make a really simple route that lives where we know how to put it, and just to keep things simple. And I'm gonna have a, um, a route that's called random, and then it's gonna take rows, and it's gonna take calls. And we're going to to fire this up, we don't need to serve static file. We, we want a JSON um, payload instead. And let's see how that works. All right, so I'm going to look scan on down a little bit. And it says we're using JSON payloads here. And this looks more like the, um, the using pattern that I need. So I'm going to grab these files. So this will let me deal with um, individual 
my individual URL parameters like this. Um, this will allow me to render a JSON payload, right? So if I could say rows is equal to parse, and then I want to parse the, um, the payload of rows like that. And then similarly, I want to do the same thing here. Um, but I want to do this with calls. Right. And so um, these are both going to be int 64s like that. So that looks pretty good. Um, oh, it looks like it's um, that um, my permissions aren't set correctly. So let's do that now. So let's say chmod 755 um, and then routes. And let's see if we have more luck this time. Yeah, so that looks like it's saved okay. So, so this should be picked up automatically by a router. Let's see if we get if we're able to fetch our route. And so we wanted what? We want a random. And maybe we want a three by three um, matrix. Yeah, and you see it's returning this three here. So great. So what I'd like to do is render instead a JSON payload that looks like this. So I'm going to say random. We could do a normal distribution, but let's go ahead and just say rows and calls. And then let's pump that right into JSON. And let's see if that gives us what we're looking for. Okay, and we're going to fire this off. Yeah, so you could see that this is giving me um, rows of rows in JSON. So this is exactly what we want, like one, two, three, or one, two, three. One, two, three, and one, two, three. So that's three rows. And we have a working JSON application, which is brilliant. So this isn't everything that I want to do for production, but the thing that I like about this tool set is that it lets me rapidly get off the ground by testing things right off the bat. And I'll be able to extend this with a bunch of extra tools. Like there are tools for building templates. There are tools for um, actually, it's a pretty good early web server. There are some things that are missing that you that you won't find if, if you're building like a full service web application. But in terms of, of wrapping up a, a web service relatively quickly, this fits the bill pretty nicely, I think. And that's an excellent thing. For Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.